Wine tasting, time wasting. It's time wasting. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to Time Wasting, the show where we uh, taste some wine. Yeah, we're tasting wine. So, time wasting is like a play on play on words, like t like wine tasting, but uh, but the T and the d and the W are moving. Been interchanged. I thought that was pretty clever. But we didn't want to insinuate that wine tasting is a waste of time because if I say it fast, it sounds like I'm saying time, time wasting. wasting, and that's not. That's not what we're saying. In fact, I'm passionate about this. It's a it's a popular pastime for me, and I like I, I wrote. If there's time, I'd like to read a little poetry slam that I wrote. Oh, cool. All right. The poem is called "Time Wasting." Don't call me a. I like wine. I'll drink a mother gallon any old time. Raised in the South on wine, not beer. Want to talk some? Shit? I'll give you something to fear. I know what to do when I taste wine. Roll it around in the glass and watch it shine. Give it a swirl, a sniff, and check for them legs. If it's a good wine, then it won't taste like eggs. I need you feed that. Oh. It's kind of like from the heart. That's it, huh? I'm serious about it, yeah. No, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Thank you, you know, yeah. for sharing them. Oh, yeah, no Chris. problem. Hope you guys enjoyed that. <clears throat> All right. Um, it's a, wine tasting is important. People spend a lot of money on wine, and I think annually, you know, per year, the wine industry sells probably like you know a billion dollars of uh, yeah, you know, worldwide probably. Yeah, and it's a bummer to get a wine that you don't like. So take our advice. We are going to actually try out four different kinds of wine. And we'll tell you, we're, we're gonna show, we're gonna. We should come up with some kind of stain for like if it's yay or nay, but. Yeah. If it's, uh, if it's, uh, you know. Like two corks up. Yeah. Let's or go with that. Two corks up. Or two corks down. Or, you know, or yeah. you smell a cork up. Cork up or cork down. <clears throat> All right, so do you wanna share? I guess, how do we start? Do we open the bottle first? Yeah, let's go ahead. Do you care what kind we have? So oh, we've got. You have three. You have I three did bring three of bottles of wine today. One. I brought one bottle of wine, but it's a big. It's a big and that is a big one, but you know, uh, quantity not quality. But in this case, you know, wine today we're going to be talking about quality of wine. So you win okay. this one. So some people don't know that wine is actually from grapes. They think oh, it's, it's from lima beans. Yeah, they, well, they're no. like, oh, I don't know, that was made in a factory, but it's not. It's actually grown from grapes. The grapes are then um, harvested, squeezed. People like step on them with no shoes on in Italy or California. And um, then or, no, now it, it's it's nationwide. I mean, in, even in Missouri, growing up, there's wine, uh, wine kind of barns, and they do tasting and stuff. And they grow, and they have their own wine there. Like, all right. it's, it's all over now. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Um, but as you can see, we're outside, and outside is probably not the in best wine place. Country. Yeah, we're in wine country. It's not the best place to taste your wine because when there's a lot of frenzy and activity, it breaks your concentration, and therefore doesn't give you a really good, accurate reading of the wine you're tasting. So normally you'd want to be inside in a hermetically sealed room with no foul odors, um, no, no talking, no TV, um, no deodorant, no perfumes. Um, I mean, we haven't, I, haven't, I don't have any perfume on, that's for sure. But I don't have perfume on either. I don't have any I've deodorant been, on either. I haven't worn deodorant in one week because I wanted uh -huh. to get all the chemicals out. This is a brand new shirt. It has never been washed and I have, um, but you know it doesn't really do much good because we are out out in the wilderness. But you know, good try. Let's, let's crack one. So over. now I came. Up, I got this bag. I want to show you. Sometimes you can get these bags. They're a really cool thing. They are, are cloth, and so you soak them, and they can, it'll keep your wine uh, chilled if it needs to be chilled. And in this case, it probably uh, it is. So we have a um, uh, Pinot uh, Grigio. Pinot Grigio. It's Pinot Grigio. Uh, or Grigio. Uh, and we'll crack it open and we'll let you know, you know, kind of how, we'll show you how uh, wine tasting works. That way you don't look like a fool when you're going to, you know, your local uh, uh, winery. Or yeah. This is a hunch, but it's a white wine, but it's actually not white. It looks a little more, pardon my French, like urine. It's like a urine color. Well, I think. And um, 
the whiter the wine like doesn't have red in it, it's probably not going to taste quite as good. Now normally this is a real dry cork. Normally you want a moist cork. Uh, this means it's been aerated, especially if it's on the shelf sitting mm -hmm. up, which is my guess. That's you want to lay it dry. down. You want to lay it down. Horizontal. Oh. Now, as my girlfriend says, it's like you want to get horizontal. And then I know what that means. Oh. I like the wine. Yeah, okay. Get fresh. Uh, get so you take quick whiffs. Short bursts of uh, odor. I'm a little yeah, so stuffed got a little up. Little cork on there. Yeah, I'm a little. Yeah, okay. I'm a little stuffed up, but normally that's how you do it. So let's just crack this open. We're, Here's we're, a cool trick: you can take the wine opener out, and this acts as a closer for the wine. Sometimes it doesn't really fit you. Well, you always finish the wine in one sitting. I usually do. Um, I do. Yeah. I don't necessarily like the taste of wine normally, so I just kind of tend to chug it or uh, spit it out, which. All right. Now wait. Here's a trick too. Whenever you're about done pouring, you, you tilt it up and then you roll it. That way you don't drop any wine droplets on anything. So you roll it. Okay, I did get a drip. So he's gonna. What I'm gonna do since we're outdoors, I'm gonna create a a, a tent or an enclosure for my nose, and that way I can get um, I can get a. Uh, and you'll swirl it around. Now, you're not, if you're just a beginner, you do not do this. You don't set it up and just swirl it. You're supposed yeah. to set it down on a surface, put your hand on the base. Here's what you want to do. It's like on a candy bar here. You want to um, keep it flat and then on a base. Like but now, if you've done this for a while, you've done, you, you know, you want to look like a pro, go ahead and pull it up and give it a little swirl. Okay, what you're looking for are legs or tears. I'm not seeing legs or tears at all. This is a cheaper wine. It's a Wakeham, Texas brand. We're Wine tasting, time wasting. It's time wasting. We're trying this out and we're not going for the expensive stuff because we know that a lot of people can't afford it. You swirl it around on your palate, get a taste, get a flavor. Now, uh, at a wine tasting, you don't want to consume the wine because you're going to be tasting various wines. So what you'll do is you'll swirl it around in your mouth, and then you'll have a spittoon. And you go ahead and spit it out. Well, it's carbonated. Got a little bit. Carbonated. Moldy. It shouldn't be car carbonated. It this fizzed. is the cheaper wine. It fizzed um, a little. It shouldn't fizz normally. I can't really... Mm -hmm. what, I, what I smell is glass and cork. <laughs> I'm not really getting much else in the glass and cork. This is a cheap wine, so this doesn't really work. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have to open up another bottle, I think, Chris. No, you know what? It smells like a little bit like um, like rosemary. You get a little bit of rosemary. I think that might add. Um... Oh, there's some stuff in my teeth in that one. Some black specks. This is fun. Actually, it's hitting on both sides of my tongue. It's, it's hitting the tart, thing. the tart, Ooh. yeah, sour part of my palate. Now, I, we went hiking here today, and I actually forgot to bring water. So we'll just have to kind of just shake your glass out. Good shot, dude. Yeah. So we also have some things to help cleanse the palate today, like uh, mushrooms. Now, these aren't wild mushrooms, although they're around, uh, but I don't really want to take my chances with those. So I went ahead and picked up some at the grocery store and hiked out here into the wilderness where the mushrooms are, kind of bringing back home, I guess, before I consume them. Here's another little uh, tip. You could take a Wacom Texas beer, crack this sucker open, pour, pour maybe a half a jigger of beer into your glass, swirl it around, dump it out, and that way it'll rinse your wine glass for the next um, flavor. So I don't really want to hike with this open, should I pour it out? What's that? I don't want to hike with this open, should I pour it out? And I'll, hang with it. I'll put it in my own backpack. Alright, there's only one end of the cork that will fit back in the bottle. The other end will not fit in. So we'll I'll hang back with this. An open container. Ooh, here we go. A nice dark one. This is kind of the stuff I like. A little, uh, shea res. Yeah, let me check my notes. Something, um... And, you know, something that you can tell your friends when you're tasting wine is you can say, Oh, well, this, this wine is chewy. Like, yeah. I, it's like, it's, it's like granola. Cream. Like, I can crunch it around in my molars. So, I would say the wine we just had is, I would give it one cork up, one cork down, which, e which equals neutral. Uh, I'm indifferent. 
I would be a cork and a half off a cork down. I'm a little, like, I, I kind of like that, the, the Skittle taste, you know, the kind of the sharp, um, fruity taste. Uh, it's not too overbearing, but yet it's, uh, it's subtle and delicious. To me, it tasted like the, um, like mouthwash, the yellow kind of mouthwash, but not quite as much flavor. And if I had to describe it in one word, I would say insipid. It was like a bicuspid wine, not, not, definitely not a molar wine. Uh, All right. uh, this one, this is you're gonna like this one, friends. I'm gonna like this one. And now you do like dark wines normally, or is it, or are you kind of a white wine guy? I like really dark wine. That was a white Zinfandel. This is a Shiraz or uh, uh, Shiraz. Um, so let's go ahead and try this one out. Let's go ahead. All right, and... you can take a little cheese, cheese, um, baby cheeses, baby cheeses, and that'll help cleanse the palate too. Oh, this is not as dark as I thought it was gonna be. A Shiraz, huh? Uh, I think it's Shiraz. Or a Shiraz. Ah, well, you know what? Never heard a little. The grass likes to get a little drunk too, you know. You might as well just spill some out. So again, we're the mother mother nature. I feel this one's a little stranger. too full to look at legs. It's a little too full. So normally don't do this, but but um, yeah, you need to leave room for the swirl. And I'm seeing some legs. I'm seeing some legs. I'm seeing too many, but I, I can't really tell. It's okay. Too much, so. Yeah, I poured mine a little too briskly, and I got bubbles. Well, you can tell that um, there are some legs. That means there's a higher alcohol content. And or glycerin. So I'm getting notes of mahogany. I'm getting a lot more notes on the uh, the rosy red wine. Careful. Oh, I definitely the grass go. again. Oh well. Oh, I'm Okay. <laughs> you're not I supposed to do that. If you're tasting wine, you don't you don't you don't drink it. You just taste I it. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that for every bowl, but I wanted to, I'm we're outside. I'm a little bit thirsty. Go ahead and clear, clear it out. <laughs> this is uh, this has got a. I don't know what you would call it. Taste. It's kind of. It's a little woody. A little woody. It's like notes of uh, hickory, oh. uh, an oak, wood chips. Also a bit of rust. So I kind of think this might have been aged a little too long. It got a little bit acidic. Oh, it could be the barrel I was aging. Right. Oh, yeah. That, that's a good point. A hiking stick This slash. is actually, uh, yeah, our hiking stick <coughs> slash barrel stave. So this came from um, a winery, and they aged the uh, the wine in oak barrels. So it smells, it smells like a fermented, kind of like a... I don't really like Cerez. Sorry. I like it. It's kind of like in your um, kitchen sink when the food coagulates and sits in the trap a little too long, it smells a little fermenty. Yeah, that's kind of what this barrel stage smells like. So that, that's probably an older barrel now. If this wine was, uh, was aged in that, it might give it this strong, oh. I didn't mean to throw that in that spit bucket. No, you want to hold right. on to that for me? Uh, I don't really want to hang on to it. I think I'm good. I'll put it back here, next to this log here. You know what else it smells like is rose petals. This is a soft cheese. Maybe easier to digest if it's soft. I don't know. All right, um, I we're having a pleasant that mix. Hey, can you use your skewer rather than touching yeah. your beer? I'm sorry. Okay. We went through all the trouble of bringing the skewers with us in the backpack. Better use them, huh? Yeah, this banana's turned a bit. This tastes kind of like a. I mean, this looks like a banana, even though it's just a baby uh, cheese. So oh. let's go on. We're good. Cleanse the palate. Clean the palate. I kind of have trouble breathing out here. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's my, one? If it's my allergies. One? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's my allergies or what, but my nose is kind of getting stuffed up. I have to breathe in my mouth. It makes it hard to chew because I can't. Okay, we got to close on. Breathe. We got these wine bags to kind of tantalize you guys a bit, but this one's a little a bit tight. Can you hang on that? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, this one has a basket with it, so it's like a Native American themed wine with the. Uh, mm -hmm. Integrated basket, which also keeps your hands from directly touching the glass. Keeps a little cooler. This is the Wacom Texas Chai Chai Tide. All right, let me see that. Let me hit that opener. Chai and Tide. Now I can't wait to try this one. This one is a little bit costs a little bit more, so I bet it's going to taste better. Yeah, actually, Usually the more it costs more, you know, it tastes better. That's exactly what I was going to say. You nailed it. You need to take off the foil first. Yeah. Yeah, you do, dude. That's not gonna work. Really? Yeah. 
All right, let me read some facts while he does that. Looks like he kind of screwed, kind of screwed the pooch on that one. I mean, you can try it. I don't know, actually. Try it. I don't think it's going to work, though. Oh, what the f***? Just pull, pull it really hard. Put it between your legs and just pull. Like, at your, like, act like you're opening, uh, you're starting your lawnmower. No, see, so yes. that's not going to work. No. So the way you open it, it's like you're opening it. Should I read some facts? Okay. Yeah, we carried this with us, too, right? Later, we can use this to maybe start the fire. So that's kind of cool. So we've, we've gone over uh, tasting conditions, which you don't really want to be in the woods like we are. We've gone over evaluating by sight, um, which is looking for legs, straight angle, uh, side angle, tilted view, and the swirl. We've kind of gone over those. Now what we're going to talk about is evaluating by sniff we've gone through, but wine flaws. Now this one, hope, hmm. hopefully... Uh, it's frozen in there. No, I got it. Wow. Nice, wow. it's like champagne. Ooh, that's gonna be good. That's really sorry. I'm Woody. looking for this one. Oh yeah. That's gonna be nice out here. Uh, now, if you were to try this, I would suggest maybe being on the woods. It smells like it's gonna be. Um, oh yeah, it's a got good a, wooden. It's got a oh. yellow, red, rusty color to it. Oh, oh, great color. It looks good. like so yeah. far. Great color. Now this one's got more legs. It looks like definitely it's got some legs and it's got. Decent color. So this is the side view that I'm examining from. You can do the top view, which it holds its color. It looks like it's a dense color, um, and it looks like an even color. Okay, what you're doing when you when you swirl the wine is definitely gonna be better. This one yeah, might you, you can, might want to go ahead and take it. It looks like a really dark blood red color. So as I swirl it, I, it thins out around the edges, and I can see what I'm working with here. No, oh, this yeah. is gonna be definitely. You, we spent a little more. This is probably like. Twice yeah, the this, is, the other. this is very plummy. There's notes of coffee, leather. Ooh, yeah, that's rubber. actually good. Yeah, a little bit like rubber. But it, it tastes good too. I went ahead and tasted it. I went ahead and, mm. and um, indulged. It doesn't have the bite. It's like a tender lover. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like the embrace of a tender lover. Mm. Well, sometimes a tender lover can have bite. Mm -hmm. No, oh, that's getting a little gross down there, but... Yeah, it's getting a, a little bit of... Um, probably what we're going to do is actually dump this behind the tree after we're done here, but we just didn't want to be spitting all over all over the field there. All right. I'm, I'm just going to go. Oh, delicious. Yeah. So... Okay, another thing you want to look for is, has the wine been filtered? Is there sediment in the bottom? There's nothing wrong with a little sediment. It's kind of like uh, home-style orange juice. You get a little pulp from the actual grapes, so not a bad thing. Now that one goes you, great, great with a uh, with a fruit pizza. Oh, try it. If you had to guess the, the age of that, what would you? What I would, would guess that's probably you know aged. Realistically, it's probably aged maybe a year or two. Now I'm sure they added something in there to make it taste like it old, it's a little older. It wasn't incredibly expensive, but probably added some sulfate or something to age it a little quicker. I was gonna say four and a half years. Four and a half years. It is. It does taste pretty good. All right. So we got one more bottle. We can we go one through more. pretty quick. You know, we're kind of running late on time, and we got to hike back still. I'm just before trying it gets to get the tip that's going to end. Oh, I got wine in my shirt. It matches the. It does. Right so that's kind of neat. So we got one more, uh, which is a fruity wine. This would be a good wine to hike back with. We could probably go ahead and finish this on the trail. It is a white Zippendale. Uh, it's white. not white though. It isn't white, but it, it is a lighter red. I don't know if you can see this here. It's kind of the sun shining through it, like a magnifying glass, and you can heat up the the bottle down there. Which is one thing you want to keep in mind. Don't you don't want this in direct sunlight, by the way. We had this in bags in our backpack all, all the way here, which is a couple hour hike, um, but it was covered, so the sun's not going to get to it, and it's not going to ruin uh, the flavor. Anymore. One thing I learned in my class um, it was like an online wine tasting course, which is kind of weird because you can't taste wine online. But um, I want to quote this: "The best wine I aromas, a certificate. Sorry. Yeah, are complex but also balanced, specific but also harmonious. So oh, you, you'll get those aromas because you want to hover your um, nostrils over the wine like a um, helicopter hovering Whoa. over a congested highway, um, catching the aromas of like a right here, like a majestic eagle." You yeah, know, exactly. There's no or a hawk. Or a hawk. Hawks are okay. Yeah. Like a chicken hawk? Eels are a little cooler. 
Uh, uh, be careful not to hook your note in your nostril at the end of the corkscrew. So when you're smelling it, oh, maybe point. take it off. It smells like Fruit Loops. Uh, it does smell like Fruit Loops. Can I do glass? I'm not really maybe. big on the smell so far, so let's see how it tastes. Just put it in with this one a little bit. Okay, like that, maybe it'll add... Uh, you can make your own blends. Oh, there's a little cork in there. Just <laughs> That's okay. Watch out for that. So now I filled that one up a little too yeah. full. Now mine will be the authentic color now because his is too dark because he's blending. Uh, sometimes you can blend if you find a fruity one and a dry one, mix them together, and you got something kind of probably pretty cool. It would be in oh, between. This is sweet. That's like a dessert. It does. It smells. I don't like the, this. Actually, I do not like this. This one smells pretty bad. This is a cheaper one even yet. So, you know, watch watch the prices, people. All right, watch my face. This is this is this is how I this is how I rate this wine. Ugh, it's really sweet. That's how I rate the wine, like, like, um, two corks down, no, or yeah, up, like whatever, whatever's no caramel, the bad tasting, way. no oak. It's just straight up sugar. Uh -huh. what it is. And I accidentally swallowed it. Oh, I can't watch you do that. Taste it. I just, I'm done. I don't even want it. I don't want this. That's when this one will go to the bears. We're gonna get start getting some bees out here pretty soon. Yeah, that um. Alright, so yeah, you just want to pay attention to the winemaker's color palette. The price. Aroma palette price. Yeah, we didn't even really touch on pricing. No, pricing is kind of important. Um, yeah, basically it's kind of like cheap stuff. I mean, bourbon you know. whiskey. The more you pay, the the better your wine is gonna um, taste. And this is made by your uncle or something. Sometimes you get free wine and it tastes pretty good. A uh, good way to clean the palate is chocolate. I, I'm, I'm done here, dude. We Actually, no, up. I just found out what's going on here. It says, some dessert wines smell strongly of honey. This is evidence of botrytis, also known as um, noble rot. So I think we might have just <laughs> been exposed to noble rot. I'm kind of worried about us actually hiking out of here. I don't feel too good now with that wine. Could be noble rot. Well, you don't see another episode, people. You don't have to. Uh, Are there a bear oh, goddess on the back room? What you can do for Noble Rod is put a little bit of lime juice in. Lime will kill it. So I'm probably killing bacteria or anything. I'm gonna do it right now. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Sorry, dude. We gotta start packing up this stuff. All right. Let's get out of here. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something about picking out some wines for you and your friends and family. Wine tasting. It's time wasting.